Hey guys, welcome to another DCS video. In this video, I was originally going to make a concept or a video on what to what a country with a flanker but a inadequate missile would do against the AIM-120. Um, so I took off with our 27Rs and inadvertently ended up making a pretty good video on missile evasion. So hopefully you enjoy this and thanks for watching. So in this engagement scenario, I was trying to pick my ne my next target to engage with, and I noticed that there was a bandit on data link that was within about 40 to 30 kilometers. Uh, I go to engage this bandit and notice that there is also a trailer underneath him, and this caused me to be a little bit more cautious of how I go about in this engagement. And as time passes on, I eventually decide to engage the bandit when I see that the bandit that was in trail is flanking and is out of the fight. And after that, I notice there's a third bandit all the way to the right that's coming into the fight. And I realize that I don't have the advantage here and I go cold. Uh, it's always good to assess the situation before you allow yourself to be in it because once you're in it, you're stuck. Uh, so I go cold. And I notice that there's actually a friendly going cold with me. And you'll see once it gets to that part of the video, uh, the bandit is going to, I'm going to end up having a bandit that's within about 20 to maybe 15 kilometers. And he launches a couple of rooms at us. I was hoping that the wingman that was in trail with me wouldn't follow me because I knew how to get out of that situation. And I figured he wouldn't and he ends up getting killed. Um, but once that part comes, we'll get to the evasion.
All right, guys, welcome to the after action report. Um, so as you can see, it's myself and the wingman that I had with me before this engagement started. Now, remember, if you saw my last video, I said that I always set a minimum abort range of about 10 miles, depending on the situation, bandit's altitude, bandit's speed, usually because if you're under that distance, nine times out of 10, you're going to get hit with the missile. Now, if you look, I'm going to recommit on this bandit at 16 miles. Now, you have to give or take about two or three miles of closure that it's going to take for me to complete this turn into the bandit. So I'm already putting myself in a horrible situation. But I was aware of that, so I didn't have a problem with it. Um, my wingman, on the other hand, I did not want him to follow me into this. So I'm slowly starting my turn preparing to turn back into the Hornet and we're at about 15 miles or so. Now the Hornet starts to gain altitudes, getting a little bit of speed advantage over us. We still have the altitude advantage at the moment, so it's not too bad. But the uh, thing about the AMRAM is that it lofts to get that extra bit of altitude and energy on the missile. Uh, so that is one thing we don't have going for us. And he launches at about 12 miles. Once we start our turn, these AMRAMs are about 24,000 feet. So they got a lot of energy behind them, a lot of altitude, and they're going to be coming down on us. So there's going to be a good bit of energy retention on the missile. And now we're committing at 9 miles. So my AMRAM that got launched at me came out at about 9 miles. That is a mile above what would be my minimum abort range. The Bandit was going about Mach 1. So it's going to be a close one. Um, so I bring the missile down to the earth, I crank it, I basically put it off set angle so I can lead it into this next turn that I'm about to make. And then once the missile is coming down, I pull up and pull it into a uh, higher altitude, basically trying to force the missile's nose up, and I evade it. Now, that was pretty fast, so I'm going to rewind it and go over it again. So as you can see, like I said, the Hornet's going about Mach 1, and it's about 20,000 feet. Now, that's not really that fast. So in this scenario, a minimum bar range of 10 miles is pretty accurate for me because the Hornet really isn't that fast. Now, if this was an F-15 going Mach 1.2, 1.3, I would have I would have been out of there at about like 15 miles. But that's not the scenario. So let's continue. Um, so the AMRAM's coming at me. I dive to the deck and I create an offset angle because I want the AMRAM to take lead pursuit. I don't want to fly straight away from it because that'll help it retain too much energy. I drag the AMRAM into thicker air and I pull it down because I want to drain the energy off the missile like it's doing now. And I'm setting it up for the next phase of my evasion. A sharp pull up at about a 10 degree angle because I want the AMRAM to bleed more energy and create a situation where it can't complete the turn. And as you can see, the AMRAM loses me because it can't keep up with a high G maneuver into the vertical because it doesn't have enough energy to do so. Um, now, that's just from years of experience of flying and understanding missile kinematics and just understanding missile evasion in general. You don't want to put yourself in that situation uh, because nine times out of ten, you won't get lucky. I just knew the Hornet's speed. I knew its altitude. I knew what the missile's capable of, and I knew the limit of the missile giving the parameters in you know DCS um, so now I'm on the offense and I know that I'm at a range that I do not want the Hornet to be able to recommit on me because anything under 10 miles and the AMRAM is going to smack me now look at these R27Rs they're they're pretty horrendous so I want to keep the Hornet as busy as possible because if he comes hot it's over for me and he can win this engagement. So I'm shooting off my R27Rs, keeping keeping on defensive, just so I get close enough to make those Fox 3s a non-factor, you know, getting within the WVR arena. And once I get there, the Hornet doesn't have the ability to pull his nose around, and I get off my Fox 2 in that inside engagement. Um, so yeah, you know, if you're a, I guess, an outdated country <laughs> using R27Rs, you're going to be uh, fighting a pretty uphill battle against the AMRAM, considering that your max range is the minimum abort range. Um, it's slightly above the minimum abort range for the AMRAM, so 
But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.